you see the concept of treaty and especially last uh, uh, week uh, we studied about how john 1 1 uh, is uh, telling about uh, jesus being uh, the creation of god and how uh, he was created by the one who had no beginning or end and how jesus uh, uh, pre-existed uh, with god since the day of his creation and we also seen that uh, there are many denominations uh, among Christianity who don't believe in uh, Trinity doctrine also. So today we're going to see how then this uh, doctrine of uh, Trinity actually came into the church. You see, this actually happened during the Dark Ages. So we are going to study more about the Dark Ages uh, in the coming weeks. <laughs> But <clears throat> what is the meaning of dark ages? If you see, it it is a period from 539 to 1799 where there was no Bible at all. The Bible was totally hidden in a Latin language, the dead language of those, uh, those times. Hence, uh, it is called as the dark ages because uh, Bible is called as light and there was no light, you see permitted uh, for the local people so that uh, they may read uh, the Bible in their own language and understand it. So we all know very well, you see, Jesus told uh, this thing in the parable of the wheat and tares, uh, you see, in Matthew 13 chapter, verse uh, uh, 24 to 27, 24 to 28. Can you read, brother, Matthew? Matthew 13, chapter verse 24 to 28, brother. Uh, Iman, brother, can you read? Okay, Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 to 27. Yes. Another parable he put, another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in, in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? Very good. So, uh, here we see son of man sowed actually the wheat and uh, you see when the servants slept uh, that is uh, in each, the seed sowing was uh, happened uh, during the days of Jesus and later on the apostles who went all over the world and sowed the faith of Christianity. That seed was sown all over the world. But once the servants, uh, the apostles, uh, they all died. You see, they all st slept. Uh, that is the time the, it was a dark period, night period, where there is no light at all. So, there was no Bible translated. There was no printing press. The Bible was not printed in all the languages. So, it remained in a dead language of Latin. And that is the time that Satan took the opportunity and began to develop all these uh, false doctrines among Christianity. See, since the beginning of the class, we have been studying a lot of doctrines in the Bible. You see how so many doctrines uh, which are not there in the Bible has crept into it. This is all the works of the devil. So, you see, the Satan, we all know, is a very cunning adversary. That's what the scripture says. You see, who did this one? If you see, the enemy did this one. That's Servants came and asked the master, Lord, how is it? Uh, this has come. So the master replied in verse 28, saying, It is our it is the enemy who has done it. So let them both grow together. In the time of harvest, we'll do the separation. So God did not, you see, you see stop this growth, uh, but he allowed it uh, for a filtration purpose uh, so that the God's real people, the little flock may be selected. Uh, Therefore, this concept of three in one God or one in three God, this is not at all a new concept. 
this is the concept which Satan has been inventing and uh, implementing, you see, in all the religions of this world. If you go to Babylon, there is also actually three gods, uh, you see, the father, uh, the son, uh, and the grandson, you see. So, how in those days, Nimrod, uh, he was the emperor of Babylon. We read it in Genesis 10 chapter. They began to build a big tower to reach heaven so that uh, <clears throat> next time if the flood comes, they may escape, uh, forgetting the promise of God. So, Nimrod's father was actually the emperor. So, Nimrod died, you see, and uh, her mother was left alone. You see, she had only one son. So, she, she feared that some might come, someone come, might come and kill her and her son. So, hence, uh, what she did was the, she married her own son and beget one more son. It was uh, actually, he was the father and he was also the son. So, that is... Uh, what happened? You see the Trinity concept of Satan began to bring into the world that was in Babylon. Next in Japan, San Pu Fu, three gods are there, China, in India, Brahma, Vishnu, Maheshwara. You see, so these three gods concept, it was there from the early period among all the religion. You see, so this doctrine Satan began to bring in the church when, if you see, it all began in the Nicene Creed of 325 AD. In Nicaea, you see, there was a debate between uh, Athanasius and Arius. You see, the two bishops of uh, Rome, you see, they both debated, uh, you see, about Trinity. One person, you see, uh, uh, Athanasius, Arius, uh, stood for that the father and the son are separate, but Athanasius stood uh, that uh, both the father and son are one and the same. So this debate between them began to grow in such a level that it used to cause political instability among Rome. Hence, uh, the emperor decided <clears throat> if this is left like this one, it won't be good, and he called the council of at Nicaea in 325 AD to discuss and debate this point. But in that uh, debate, you see, nobody could disprove the doctrine of uh, Arius uh, that uh, father and son are separate. But the majority of the people who supported the wrong doctrine of Athanasius, the father and son, were greater than those who supported Arius. So what happened was there that... Uh, the king, uh, emperor had no choice rather than to support, uh, you see, Athanasius uh, and uh, Arius was uh, excommunicated on an island where, uh, you see, cannibals were there who were eating man's flesh. But uh, by God's grace, you know, Arius went there and within one year he converted the whole uh, island people into Christians. Then uh, the emperor uh, reinvited him to the nation, but that, but that was uh, too late. Already the doctrine of a father and son, one and the same, began to grow into the church because nobody read the Bible. Then, see, that time, Holy Spirit was not considered at all. Only father and son were one, same way considered. But after a few years, again, in Council of Constantinople, 381 AD, you see, the uh, bishops uh, again used to debate uh, and claim that, uh, you see, uh, father uh, and uh, son are uh, same. So similarly, Holy Spirit uh, also is a God. Uh, that happened in 381 AD. So, so, dear brethren, so in 381 AD, that was the time, that the first time the doctrine of Trinity was confirmed as a, you see, church creed. Until such time, there was no doctrine of uh, Trinity. Then only that word Trinity actually came into existence, uh, you see, among uh, the church. But uh, this word is not there in the Bible at all. Not there in anywhere in the Bible. So, 381, this happened. Then what happened, you see, again, uh, after a few more years, uh, 
there was another debate saying uh, you see as a father uh, uh, is god uh, son is also god and the holy spirit is also god so similarly you see god's uh, mother is also god uh, then what happened in the council of ephesus 431 mother mary was venerated to be god so then what happened four gods came into existence quadranity actually came you see first only one was there then father and son came and father son and the holy ghost came then father son holy ghost and mother mary also came into picture then again after a few years one more debate came then they told if the mother of uh, jesus is god then uh, father joseph uh, you see who was actually a father of uh, jo uh, jesus uh, he also should be god and his brothers uh, they also should be god there are blood relatives so similarly they began to bring so many people as gods into the church then they, they stopped the debate and told no 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 this is too much it will end it here only so this is how this false doctrine crept into the church so they didn't have any verse to prove this doctrine. So what did they use? How did they prove this false doctrine? If you see, they used to do huge paintings. <clears throat> you see, paintings like uh, this, what you see on the screen here. The father, son and the Holy Ghost. The father being a very old person with long beard, full white hairs. But Jesus, uh, yeah, of a medium age, you see, very smart. You see, yep. and Holy Spirit, a very young teenager look. Everybody looks the same, but age uh, difference. Uh, you know, order also, touch your father in the top, Jesus in the center. You see, Holy Spirit on the bottom. See, this is how uh, they used to do. See, Hindus, uh, what they, do? they put uh, Trimuthi, you know, uh, Brahma, Putra, Maheshwara, one body, three heads. Similarly, they used to, you see, pictorially represent the same thing, uh, do drawings. Uh, uh, one body, you know, three heads, uh, father, son, and the Holy Ghost. Uh, but only body are one because they're all one. You see, our uh, they used to show three different identities uh, sitting next to each other, age difference. Uh, but uh, legs, if you see, father is having legs, so Jesus is having legs, Holy Spirit, no legs. Why? Because Holy Spirit uh, can fly. You see. So that doesn't have legs, only four legs are there. That's how they used to, you see, uh, show and prove this doctrine of Trinity because they, they could never prove this from the Bible itself. Then, so you, you might have seen, if you have gone to any uh, Roman Catholic cathedral, huge cathedrals in Europe, you might have seen so many paintings uh, are put on the glass. Uh, you see, this is all... The paintings based on these doctrines only to prove this false doctrine, the Abraham, which is unscriptural, they began to use all these, uh, these schemes to develop this one. Then, after, uh, you see, uh, when the paintings were not sufficient, additionally, they used to take the examples outside the Bible. Like, for example, sun, you see, uh, there's only one sun, but it gives three things. Uh, Energy, power, strength. It is one son, one son, but three things. So similarly, father, son, the Holy Ghost. You see, they are one, but do three types of activity. That is how they trinity. And uh, they used to prove that uh, this is a uh, faith. Uh, you should believe it. Uh, you have faith, you have to believe it. Uh, always prove it by taking example of water. Water is in three forms. Solid, uh, uh, liquid and gaseous form. So similarly, Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, you see, they are in three forms. They can everywhere, anywhere, anytime in three different forms. So that is Trinity. Or take the example of a table. For a table, you should be having at least minimum three legs. So similarly, Trinity, three are important. And uh, take example of, uh, uh, you see, cycle. Uh, bicycle means how many wheels are there? Uh, three wheels. Two front and back, but center pre is there. That is very important. So similarly, father is there, son is there, center Holy Spirit, a connecting wheel, that is also there. And uh, another example is co coconut. Eh? Coconut is having how many layers? Uh, three layers. Outside one cover, inside one more uh, hard cover. Then ultimately, inside only that white uh, fruit 
they are that is our trinity father son holy spirit but they are two uh, together together three are together so what is you see uh, that is a uh, trinity they began to claim father son and all then uh, other example egg egg is also having three layer but it to one egg no similarly father son and holy spirit three persons are yet uh, they are one god so this is how they have begun they used to prove that trinity outside the scriptures those who don't believe they simply blame them telling that you don't have the holy spirit so in such a way this doctrine was you see held on that even today if you go and tell to any person that uh, from the scriptures it is very hard for them to believe even if jesus comes and tells that no i am the son you see the christians will tell no 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 you are the father who told you you are wrong you committed a mistake please go and correct it for yourself and come because why because a pastor has taught them their faith has become more on the pastor than on the bible they have then just imagine uh, uh, as a jewish people rejected jesus as the son of god what did god do god rejected the jewish nation and do you think that uh, uh, christians will be accepted today they have then just because uh, they are accepting only christ you see and forgetting god no what does the bible say this is eternal life to know the only loving true god and his only begotten son jesus <laughs> for eternal life you see these two things are important jesus and heavenly father you just can't accept jesus and forget the father you see or imagine that the both are one same so god won't accept it definitely therefore you have then what is actually the doctrine of christ let us read second john verse 9 brother second john verse 9 brother you remember brother ah you remember brother you there okay brother second john verse 9 brother verse 9 so we were transgressed and abide not in the doctrine of Christ hath not god he that abide in the doctrine of Christ he hath both the father and the son hmm. you see doctrine of christ what is the doctrine of christ you see having both the father and son not the book the one and the same that is why two names will be given no just imagine father and son as both are so we used to have father in our family huh? his father also son na are we the father and uh, is our father the son no the two words are mentioned because two are separate uh, if they were one and the same why the two words will be used dear but in the same way the doctrine of christ is uh, knowing the father having both not one and the same both father and son is important read john 17:3 also brother John seventeen three, and this is life eternal that they might know the the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Ah, uh, this is eternal life. If you want to get eternal life, we should be very clear in this doctrine that we know the only one true God and Jesus Christ whom He has sent. Ah. Uh, You see, dear brethren. Therefore, dear brethren, the Bible clearly says that Jesus is the mediator between God and man, Christ Jesus. First Timothy two five, brother. First Timothy two five, brother. First Timothy two five. Hmm. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men. the man christ jesus hmm. you see one god one mediator not both are one and the same you see and that is uh, you see man christ jesus one god one mediator between god and man that is jesus christ our lord dear brethren so therefore 
This is very clear. When Jesus was created, you see, when he came into the world, how was Jesus? You see, he brought, what nature was he brought? He was brought as a perfect human being. Remember the subject of ransom? You see, how Adam was created? Adam was created a little lower than the angels. It is the same way that Jesus was created. You see, little lower than the angels. <clears throat> you see? And, you see, <clears throat> Jesus was given the authority. <clears throat> Read Hebrews 2.5. <clears throat> Hebrews 2.5. Uh, can you read from the Bible, brother? Okay, Hebrews 2.5. Hmm. For unto the angels had not put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speak. Oh, sorry, brother. Brother, it is Hebrews 2.9, brother. Sorry. 2.9. Hmm. <clears throat> Hebrews 2.9. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. Ah, you see, made little lower than the angels. If he's made little lower than the angels, how can he be equal to God who is lower than the angels? You see, read John chapter 20 verse 17. Brother. John 20 verse 17. Jesus said unto her, Toss me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren, and say unto them, I ascended unto my father, and your father, and to my God, and your God. Mm, you see, what did Jesus say? I am not yet ascended to my father. You see, and your father. That means Jesus himself had a father, and he is not the one of the same he clearly says, I have not even ascended to heaven where my father is there. You see, and he is your father also. And he tells, and to my God, Jesus himself is having a God. He is not even ascended to that God. You see, very clearly Jesus told your brethren, you see, I have not yet ascended to my father and your father, my God and your God. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you see, Jesus' relationship to, to us is that we are brothers to Jesus Christ. Because we are both same father. So we become brothers. Read Hebrews 2nd chapter 11 and 12. Brother. Hebrews 2, 11 and 12. For both, the, both he that sanctify, sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. Mm, you see, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. For this cause is not ashamed to call the church as brethren. You see, so that is the relationship of our to Jesus Christ. Therefore, dear brethren, nah, the believing that Jesus himself is God, the God himself came and died on the cross, as per the scriptures, is actually a wrong doctrine. Apostle John clearly wants to not to believe such doctrine. Let us read 1 John 4 chapter 1, 2 and 3 and later on verse 14 and 15 brother. <clears throat> First and four, one to three. Beloved, believe not easy every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone unto in gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confessed that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God, and every spirit that conf confesseth not that Jesus Christ is coming to in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is, is it in the world. See, that is the spirit of Antichrist. Uh, believing that Jesus is God and God came and died. What does the Apostle John say clearly? 
Don't believe every doctrines in the world because lot of false doctrines are coming to the world. So, how do we test it? The best test is that he, those who confess that Jesus is come in flesh, underline, Jesus Christ is come in flesh, that is the doctrine of, you see, true God. That is the true doctrine. But if anybody comes and preaches other thing, that God himself came and died on the cross, you see, and how true it is. Therefore, the Bible clearly says that this is the spirit of Antichrist. Read the same chapter, brother, verse 14 and 15, read, brother. Huh? 14 and 15. Hmm. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is Son of God, God dwelt in him hmm. and he in God. See, very clearly he tells that, uh, you see, whosoever confess that uh, Jesus is uh, was sent by the Father as the Savior of the world. You see, that is a clear proof that God is uh, dwelling among them. Not that the God came himself. God sent his son Jesus to die. You see, that is a proof that God is dwelling in us, that we are in the path of truth. Dear brethren, you see, today many of the Christians are uh, ignorantly, uh, blindly believing uh, you see, this doctrine of Trinity. You see, one of the reasons is a uh, wrong translation. You see, uh, the various scriptures are uh, twisted and uh, you see, turned and uh, uh, wrongly translated in the Bible. So that gives one of the misunderstanding. The best test uh, you see is to do is that uh, you see, take uh, the Bible and give it to a lay person who is not even a Christian. Give it to any lay person who doesn't know anything about uh, you see Bible. Just give him the Bible. Lock him in a room. And tell him to read the Bible completely. And as soon as he comes from the room, just ask him one question. Sir, please tell me, what did you understand about God and about Jesus in the Bible? They will clearly tell that God is the Almighty God. They will clearly tell that Jesus is his son. They will clearly tell that the Holy Spirit is power. Dear brethren, nobody reading the Bible have confusion. This confusion is been created by the pastors of this world and the misinterpretation and the false translations, dear brethren. You see, therefore in Revelation 5th chapter also, it is very clearly given. God had the complete Bible in his hand, the authority, the scroll, which can never be opened. It was sealed with seven seals. You see, then what happened? Uh, you see, as John was crying, uh, one elder came and told him, Don't worry, behold the lion of the tribe of Judah. Jesus Christ is found worthy to open the scroll. You see, if he was God, then, uh, you see, what is doing in front of God? Uh, he should be on a seat, no? He should be having the scroll within himself, no? You see, let us read that verse for the Revelation 5th chapter, verses 1 to 4. <laughs> Revelation chapter 5, verse 1 to 4. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written with, within and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof. And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much. Because no man was found worthy to open and to read, <clears throat> to read the book, neither to look thereon. Continue. And one of the elders said unto me, Wept mm. not. Behold, mm. the lion of the tribe of Judah, mm. the roof of David, hath prevailed to open the book, ah, and the seven see? seals thereof. Yes. Who is overcome? That means uh, he has overcome, he has proved his faithfulness. Generally, the authority is given to Jesus. Before that one, that authority was not even given to Jesus himself. So therefore, the one sitting on the throne, having the scroll, the Bible completely under his authority is different. And the one person who has overcome, you see, proved his faithfulness to open the scroll, they are two different identities. They are not one and the same. So father is different. You see? The son 
is different. Huh? Therefore, you see, uh, this uh, uh, word, actually, uh, for the word that is used for Almighty God in the Bible, in the KJV Bible, in the English KJV Bible, is actually Jehovah. You see? Uh, and the Hebrew word for it is YHWH. Actually, in the Bible, in the English King James Version Bible, this word Jehovah is not used many times. It is totally removed. Instead of that one, other words are substituted. I'll tell you which words. Okay. But in the original, you see Hebrew yes, manuscripts, the word that is used for Jehovah is YHWH. Jehovah word doesn't come in the original Bible at all. Only the word YHWH comes. So how do you spell or uh, YHWH. Nobody can spell it because there is no vowels. If you need to spell any English words, vowels should be must. Then only you can pronounce it. Or else you can't pronounce it. <clears throat> you see, therefore, the translators have substituted some words in between. You can see it on the screen. Y was there. A they substituted. H was there. W was there. E they substituted. And H was already there. So how, how it became? It became uh, Yahweh. You see? And uh, you see, as uh, it is came and uh, used in uh, various languages, thus the word Jehovah actually came. Actually, Jehovah word is not there in the original Bible at all. You see? And uh, this word comes, uh, you see, first time in the Bible in Exodus 6, chapter 3rd verse. Exodus 6, 3. KJV Bible. Read brother, Exodus 6, 3 brother. Huh. <clears throat> Exodus 6, 3. Hmm. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, by the name of the Almighty, but my, but by my name, Jehovah, was not, was I not known to them. Ah, Jehovah, that is the first time in English KJV is given. But in various, uh, you see, local languages and all, you see, that word actually is maintained. You see, no? actually, the word Jehovah is not even the name of God. That is actually his title. You know, what is the meaning of that word? You see, <clears throat> the meaning of that word means, uh, you see, he that is there from beginning. I am that I am. That is the meaning of that word. That means, he has no beginning, no end. You see, there is no end or beginning. He is there. He is there. That is the meaning of that word. Therefore, the Hebrew word used there actually, you see, is Elohim. Sometimes uh, they use this word in com combination uh, with a word called as Elohim. Elohim means what? That word is used purely. You see, like uh, uh, in a most respectful manner. You see, if you want to address any elderly person, how will we call them? We won't call them. Uh, please come here. We will tell. You see, we will tell, sir. Please come here. Aap aayega. Tum aao. You see, those words uh, we won't use it. Aap. That is the word. You see, that is used there. Read Exodus three fourteen, mother. Exodus three fourteen. <clears throat> Exodus three fourteen. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Though thus shall those say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. Hmm. I am, I am. You see, I am that I am. I am that I am is what? I am there. I am existing. I am existing, that's all. There's no beginning, no end. You see, no, you see, nothing is there. You see, that is everlasting, that word everlasting meaning. That is the meaning, actually, you see, the word Almighty or Jehovah or Yahweh actually stands. Now, how do we differentiate in our English Bible University? Then, if you take our English KJV Bible, that differentiation we can clearly identify. How? Whenever it is speaking about uh, Almighty God, you see, in the Old Testament, the word capital G-O-D, or capital L O R D used. You see, that is how we can recognize the difference. But for whenever it is using for the reference for Jesus Christ in the Old Testament, capital L, but small O, small R, small D is used. 
that is your reference for the jesus in the old testament similarly you see that one is clearly uh, we can read one verse uh, read psalm 110 one brother psalm 110 one we can note the difference there uh, emmanuel brother you are there psalm 110 one psalm 110 and one the lord said unto my lord sit thou at my right hand until i make thine enemies thy footstool very good do you see the difference between the two lords brother yes brother uh, first one is full caps other is uh, only first letter is caps correct now yes brother that is actually almighty god next to the word lord is used for jesus christ brother so this is how we actually make the difference there when coming to the new testament it is very clear whenever it is mentioned about god what god is there or it is mentioned as father heavenly father but uh, <coughs> whenever it says about uh, jesus christ the, the word lord and son is used therefore this is uh, clearly uh, identifiable uh, in the bible as we read it okay now uh, devil has brought this evil doctrine the false doctrine in the church but uh, do devil believe this one at least devil does he believe in trinity let us read james 219 brother james 219 do believe that there is one god do those well the devils also believe in tremble mm -hmm. see james uh, tells uh, you believe in one god good okay but uh, next he tells devils also believe what do they believe they believe in one god they don't believe in three god they won't believe in uh, three in one god they believe in one god and to tremble it seems but today our christians they have worse than this one even after showing everything from the scriptures also they don't believe it they are strong in that word you see in the doctrine of trinity very clearly it says you see satan and this is the whole world you see to believe what trinity while he himself doesn't believe it huh? uh, what did the fallen angels uh, testify about jesus uh, when they were cast out from uh, human beings uh, i'll read luke 441 brother luke 441 <clears throat> and devils also came out of many crying out and saying thou art christ the son of god and he rebuking them suffered them not to speak for they knew that he was christ see but they knew that jesus was christ they never said that they knew that he was the almighty god no each and every evil spirit that came out they gave a testimony saying thou art christ son of god now when satan tempted jesus uh, how did he address jesus uh, if you are son of god then uh, make these stones as bread did he say that if you are almighty god do this one no no why satan himself clearly knows that jesus is not god uh, jesus is god's son read brother matthew 4 3 brother <clears throat> Uh, you remember that Matthew 4:3 mm -hmm. when the tempter came to him he said if thou be the son of god command that the stone be made bread you see if thou be the son of god he said why because he knew very well uh, this is uh, was his uh, actually title you see therefore dear brethren what did jesus taught us to pray huh? Huh? you ask in my name whatever you want to the father he will grant to you correct now read uh, john 15 16 brother <clears throat> email brother john 15 16 for john 15 16 he had he had chosen me but i have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit shall remain that who whatsoever he shall ask of the father in my name he may give it to you you see what so you shall ask the father in my name you see he will give it to you not that uh, what so ask me in my name i will give it to you is it given there uh, but today our christians uh, 
address the prayer when they pray. Uh, how do they pray? Master Lord, oh Lord, oh King, oh Prince, oh Prince of Peace, oh Master Lord, please Lord, Master. They do all these things. Uh, you see, until I ask all these things in Jesus' name. What's so confusion, dear brethren? Uh, it is like writing a letter to uh, you see, Mr. Prakash. Uh, without even posting a stamp or without even putting a proper address, will Prakash read? You see, if you're addressing the letter to, you see, uh, to uh, Emmanuel, brother, but uh, we should uh, initially mention brother Emmanuel, dear brother Emmanuel. Uh, then if you address to Emmanuel, Emmanuel brother will read. Uh, but if you address it as uh, hi brother Prakash, and if you write, give the letter to Emmanuel, if you send it to post it to Emmanuel, will brother Emmanuel read it? Uh? No, as soon as he opens the letter, he says, oh, Dear Brother Prakash, my mistake it has come to me. You will immediately fold and give it to Prakash. Dear Brother, we should pray in a proper way. That's what Jesus said. Ask to the Father in my name. He shall give it to you, dear Brother. This relationship between the Father and the Son is clearly shown to us in the life of Joseph. You see, Joseph, once when he interpreted the dream of Pharaoh, Joseph was given the complete authority. You see, he was uh, honored with a chain, a beautiful robe, a signet ring of the king was given to him. So that whatever he does, uh, he was the supreme leader. None of the Egyptians were supposed to lift their hand or leg without the permission of Joseph. And Joseph was the supreme leader above everybody except on the throne because Pharaoh would be Always on the top of Joseph. He was supposed to ride on the, you see, main chariot. You see, not the first chariot, but the second main chariot. You see, let us read those verses, but it's clearly given to us. Uh, Genesis 41 chapter, brother, Emmanuel, brother, verses 40 to 44. Genesis 41 chapter, verses 40 to 44, brother. Huh? <clears throat> Genesis 41, 40 to 44. Thou shalt be over my over my house, and according to, unto thy word, shall all my people be ruined. Ah. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. Ah, only on the throne. Only on the throne. Underline, brother. Only on the throne I will be greater than thou. Same with God and Jesus. Ah. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt, and the Pharaoh ark. Pharaoh took of his ring from his hand mm. and put it on Joseph's hand mm. and arrayed him mm. in the vestures of fine linen. Fine linen? And put mm. gold chain ah. about it. Mm. And he made him to ride in the second chariot. Second chariot, his... brother. Underline, not the first chariot. It is always reserved to Pharaoh. Second chariot was given to Joseph. Ah. He made him to ride in the second chariot which he had, and they cried before him, bowed the knee, and he made him ruler over all the land of the Egypt. Ah, and the made him ruler said, over all the land of Egypt. He was the ruler, but on the throne, who was uh, supreme? Pharaoh was supreme. Though he was the ruler, though he was the leader, on the throne. You see, Pharaoh was superior. Huh? Continue with that. Huh? And the Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift off his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. You see, Pharaoh himself told, without Joseph's permission, nobody should lift up his hand or leg. Does it mean that uh, even Pharaoh was not supposed to lift up his hand or leg without Joseph's permission? He himself was given the authority. So who can control uh, Pharaoh? Pharaoh was above Joseph. Oh, Joseph was given all the authority through, you see, huh? Pharaoh. Pharaoh was always on top. He was never under him. Same way with God and Jesus. Brother. See, the verse is given there in the Bible itself. Where Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15, 27-28. <clears throat> For he has put all things under his feet. Okay, Manal. For he had put all things under his feet, but when he said all things are put under him, it is manifest that 
he is accepted ah, which is you see ah huh? for he god had put all things under his feet jesus is feet it seems sir when god says that i have put all things under his feet you see it is manifest that he is expected uh, accepted that means what it is very clearly that the god himself is not under jesus god has put everything under jesus sir doesn't mean that even god is also under jesus very clearly you see beautifully the verses clearly given brother that means both are different identity then continue brother ha huh? who is did put all things under him and when all things shall be subdued unto him then shall the son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him that god may be all in all aha uh -huh. when all things are uh, you see brought under control Jesus himself shall surrender to God it seems dear brother he shall also come under God it seems dear brother he shall also be under God why so god may be all in all that is that you see uh, dear brother the difference between the father and the son you see though father has given the entire authority you see jesus uh, will always be under the father this differentiation we need to understand very clearly therefore dear brethren the word trinity you see not even comes one time in the bible so if somebody preaches trinity now how do we handle that one the bible says you don't even allow them into their house don't even welcome them don't even sit with them don't even eat with them with whom with the preachers of the false doctrine of trinity read second john verse 9 and 11 uh, email brother second john verses 9 to 11 can you read second john verse 9 to 11 whosoever transgressed and abide not in the doctrine of christ hath not god he that abide in the doctrine of christ he hath both the father and the son if there comes any unto you and bring not this doctrine receive him not into your house see Neither receive him not into your house if anybody comes you see then don't bring this doctrine what the doctrine of father and son not the father and son are one and the same father and son two different don't receive them into your house then continue ha huh? neither write him god speed no tell him jai masi don't tell him praise the lord no don't tell him why continue for he that bideth in god speed is partaker of his of his evil deeds ha ah, because one who does such thing is actually indirectly partaking of his evil doctrine sir therefore dear brethren we should be very very careful okay so at last let us read on verse now let me see who is going to answer this question okay uh email brother please read probs chapter 30 verse 4 probs chapter 30 verse 4 probs chapter 30 verse 4 hmm Who hath ascended upon up into heaven or descended? Ah, who listen, hath... listen, read carefully. This is the question. I'm you need to answer. That's the reason. Who has ascended up into heaven or descended? Ah. Who had gathered the wind in his fist? Who had gathered the wind in his fist? Ah. Who had bound the waters in a garment? Who had bound the waters in a garment? Hmm. who had established all the ends of the earth who had established all the ends of the earth ha huh? what is his name what, is, what is his it? name ha huh? and what is his son's name ha ah. if thou canst tell ha ah. and what is his son's name can you tell now tell me what is his name and what is his son's name His name is Jehovah, and his son name is Jesus. Very good, brother. Simple, brother. See, the Bible speaks for itself. 
We did not put this question in the Bible. The Bible itself has this question. If both were one and the same, why would God put such a question? It would be ridiculous, no? God has mentioned what is his name, his son's name. That means two are different identity persons are there. That is the reason God wants this to be clearly understood. Therefore, dear brethren, you see, here we are not preaching that we don't believe in Jesus. We believe in Jesus. Please clearly identify. We are called Jesus Loves Ministry. We believe in Jesus. Without Jesus, there is no salvation at all. Without Jesus, God doesn't give us the truth at all. Without Jesus, there is no light. Without Jesus, God doesn't give us the Holy Spirit. So Jesus is very, very important. But what we are trying to tell is that the Father and the Son are not one and the same. They are two different persons. That's it. To tell this one very clearly, it has taken more than one and a half months time. Why? Because the doctrine has crept into the church like that. Dear brethren, we believe in the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, we can't even understand any scriptures at all. That is the reason so many of the Christians are still blinded. You see, the Holy Spirit is very important. It's not God. It is the power of God. You see, Therefore, dear brethren, so this has to be clearly understood. Okay. So, any doubts, any questions, please let us know. Any doubts, any questions? Imagine, brother, any doubts, any questions? Imagine, brother, any questions you have? Yeah, if Jesus is only the Son of the God and He is not a God, and what about the others who believe only in the God, not in Jesus? Will they get the salvation? I did not get a question. A uh, little bit slowly and clearly. And it's like uh, Jesus is the only, if uh, only the Son of God. Mm. If there is any one person that believes only in God, not in Jesus, mm. what about their salvation? What does Bible say? Acts four twelve. Acts four twelve. Can you read it? Acts four twelve. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, where, whereby we must be saved. Ah, what is the name? Jesus. Yes, brother. So, believing in Father and Son is very important, brother. Okay. So, so if, if so, then what about the Jews? Ah, that's the reason they're not saved, no. Where do they have the part of the heavenly salvation? The Jewish people, even today, they are waiting for the Messiah. They don't believe in Jesus, sir. You know, very clearly, no? They don't believe in Jesus, sir. Even the Jewish people who are living today, they don't believe in Jesus, sir. You see? They are still waiting for the Messiah. You know that wailing wall is there in Jerusalem, where the Jewish people, they wail and pray to God. You, have you seen that? Uh, have you, do you know that one of them? Imagine, brother, do you know about this one? Yes, brother. That is actually a portion of the wall of the temple of Jerusalem that was destroyed. That's the only portion of the wall that is still standing. <clears throat> the Jewish people, even today, they pray, you see, keeping the Torah in the hand, saying, God, please send us the Messiah. You promised us that you're going to send a prophet. Please send us. Why? Because they are blinded. They can't even recognize Jesus. That is the reason they are blinded. Even they are waiting. Their eyes will be opened when, you know, shortly, third world war is going to happen. In the third war, war, their eyes will be opened. That's what the Bible says. We are going to study all these things in the coming days, brother. You see, when Israel's eyes will be opened, they will be saved. <clears throat> but not for the heavenly salvation. They will come for the Earthly salvation. Remember, there are two salvations. Heavenly salvation, earthly salvation. In the Bible we read now. So they will come for the, you see, earthly salvation, not for the heavenly salvation. But if you need to be part of the heavenly salvation, you see, you need to know this doctrine very clearly. Because in the whole world, when Jesus returns the second coming, he is going to rule on this earth for a thousand years. So the whole unbelieving world will be resurrected. They don't be, uh, you see, they don't, they won't be knowing about Jesus. After coming back to life on the same earth, in the same flesh, 
then they will realize, uh, oh, we are uh, still on this earth only. And who has brought us back to life? Uh, it is Jesus. God will reveal this truth to them. Then they will accept Jesus as the Messiah. Then they will accept Jesus as the Savior. Then they will be saved for earthly salvation, not heavenly salvation. Remember uh, Jesus said, brother, in John 6 chapter, no man can come to me except the Father draw me. You see? And uh, whom the Father sends, uh, I will never cast him out. Correct now? Hello? Even with that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. You can, you can note in the verse, John 6, 44. Okay? So that is also mentioned. And read John 5. Uh, 45, 46, 47. John 5, 45 to 47. Read, brother. Emmanuel, brother. John 5, 45 to 47. Ah. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one Jewish. He sent you a Jewish nation. Huh? There is one that accused you, even Moses, in whom you trust. For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me. For he wrote for me, wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall you believe my word? You see, how will you believe my word? You won't be believing. So that is the answer. If the Jewish people, they don't believe the uh, Torah properly, they can't identify Jesus. Read John 6, 44. John 6, 44. Hmm. No man can come to me except the Father which hmm. had sent me draw him. Hmm. Yes. And I will raise him hmm. up at the last day. Yes. Okay. Okay, brother, any questions for? Any more questions, brother? No, oh, brother. Okay. Uh, Peter, brother, any question? No, thank you. Okay. Okay, then. So, next week we'll see. Uh, in the end, uh,